Yo, you can see me in the clear, right? Now, what do we got here? What up between rounds, TV? Jack of, what's up, people? Yeah, there it is. All right, Jack Alexander, what's up with the crown? All right. You know, I got a good topic. Um, last Wednesday on my live, someone said, yo, Rob, like, why are you still in New York? You know, a lot of people ask me, you know, like, what the fuck? You know, people that care about me or love me and whatnot. You know, there are people out there that are in my life like that. And, you know, they're like, what the fuck? Like, you know, and it's true. Like, everyone really is gone here. And I'll get into that when we get more people in the room. What do we got? Nine people in there? Four thumbs up. Come on, give me a couple more thumbs there. All right, so what's up, RD? Between rounds, never met you, Dole CAC. Many respects, you got busy. Hey, Dole, yeah, man, wow, for real, huh? Yeah, I used to love those DOs, bro. You were killing it, man, killing it hard, man. D-O, and then under it, L-O on the insides. Yeah, man, you were fucking up like crazy, bro. Definitely, man. Yeah, you up there. You up there like ant. Remember the fucking ant? That shit. Ant, ant, ant. Yeah, he had a lot too. But yeah, you had a lot of fucking insides, man. And a lot of fucking fill-ins, man. Definitely. Wow. That's an honor to have you on here, man. Yeah, it's cool, man. Where were you from? Where were you from? Where were you catching them shits? I got my face cut open up on 175th on the A's. Those FK guys. But where were you getting them? Were you getting them up there? Uh, up behind 75th Street? Yeah. <laughs> you were going there? Yeah. yeah. What borough were you from originally? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I started in Queens on the A line. Yeah. I used to go to Grant, too. I'd go to Grant. Like Nash, OA. Uh, Sayer, uh, Ripe, RP. I would do fill-ins and shit. I didn't do insides in Grant, but they used to have the old CC flats. And I used to get the D yard too. I'd catch the D yard. I'd go off on the four train and I'd climb through the window, you know, with a staircase for the uh, the downtown four train. And the stairs that go up on the elevated tracks, after you pay your fare or you hop over the turnstile, I'd go through that window and through the little hole in the fence and I'd kill that yard, man. And I get them in the winter too, right? On, on like the double A train. But I didn't have the A's, man. Not like you guys, man. I went with Shama. I was with Shama, Arson, me, Meth. Yeah. But I didn't have it like you, man. You had that shit smashed, man. And that's fucking a lot of trains. That's a big line, man. Like the A, I think that's the longest line, man. And you had a lot of insides. I remember I'd get off one train and you'd have that shit all smashed. Get on another train, same shit. Different lines and shit. Yeah, you up, man. Oh, Harlem, too. Yeah, that's probably where it was, right? Yeah, the A yard up there. That's considered a yard, 175th Street. I've heard people call that a yard, just like Grant, too. But I don't know. I, I thought yards were supposed to be big. I always picture them outdoors, you know. But there's a couple of them are like that. Like the four yard, even. You know, up under Tracy Towers on 175th. <laughs> you had beef with FK. They ever catch you out there? Let me see what side of my face. You can see that shit, right? You see here? No, it's on this side. My reflection is reversed, so I'm trying to figure it out. But you can see that. Let me see what side it is. Hold on. Yeah, that's it. It got me right here. On this side. You can see the slurs. That middle piece hung down like a French fry. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Try to get the fuck out of there, you crazy shit. Yeah, but they fuck around, man. Them dudes were setting it off, FK. Later on, they became like them, uh, 
some dudes up in Washington Heights. So there's a, like a drug, um, yeah, like a fucking enterprise or some shit. They were big in the drug business, man, like a gang, you know, with the cowboys, right? Wild cowboys. Happy birthday there, Homer Lee. Wow, 30, man. You were fucking youngin', man. Wow, 30 years old. Happy birthday. Right, what else do we got between us? Yeah, Shama. Yeah. Shama. I was I got I was seeing him on Instagram a little bit, but I, I don't really go on Instagram too much anymore. If you hear from him, tell him I said hello, man. Arson actually came by here once when his um he took my kid out to Long Island with his kid. When my son was young, and I haven't heard from him or seen him again either. Mr. Sensei, respect from Italy. Great channel. Thank you. Thank you very much there, Alex, Mr. Sensei. Sensei. All right, Mr. Alex Sensei, between rounds TV, the CC used to be the longest. Yeah, you see, I never really looked into it, but yeah, I guess so. If you say it, yeah. I always thought the A was long, but. I remember Click had that shit good too, man. The A's. And is the Wiz. Psh. All right. Between rounds, they chase you out of 175th onto George Washington Bridge. <laughs> See, I didn't even know that place like that. I actually ran into a dead end. Like, I ran to the back where the plunger was. And then there was like 20 of them that came around the bend this way. I already had like five or six of them coming after me from back that way. Like, yeah, I pulled the emergency. I mean, um... Originally, was we were indoors, the inside the train. It was uh, me, Shama, Arson, and this dude, Meth. So I ran because I saw him coming this way. I ran to get under the seat to pull the lever. And I pulled the lever, and the doors opened. You know how the doors open? And I literally jumped out almost right into their fucking hands. There was so many of them. I thought they were over there. That was it. But I didn't realize they were flushing me out. That's like a trick that the police do. You know, they'll chase you, they'll ah, 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 make a lot of noise. So you go right out into the station, right into the police's hands. So, uh, you know, I pretty much fell for the oldest trick in the book. I literally landed right in their fucking hands. Like they caught me. Like I would, like the, how the punk rock clubs, how they do the crowd surfing. <laughs> like, I did, <laughs> I landed right in their fucking lap, man. Me and Meth. But that gave time. Shaman Arson were able to get out of there. Yeah. They popped out a hatch. They got out of there. But yeah, meth, they got him like this right down the face like that. Like, fucking like a Bowie knife, like shit Rambo has. When they got his eye like this, they didn't actually get his eyeball. It went from this part to his cheekbone and missed his eyeball, but sliced his eyelid. Yeah, that shit was crazy. <laughs> yeah, they fucked his ass up bad, man. Well, I mean, we got out of there. We actually met up with Shaman Arson and shit. Yeah. I think what happened, there was so much fucking noise going on down there. They just bounced. I guess they were done there for a while. I mean, they pretty much had us. They could have killed me if they wanted to. Yeah. But yeah, them dudes are <laughs> wild shit. Yeah, CC is going to be longer. Chase me out of there. Gizmo, I saw one of your tags on an orange barrier. It was so hype. Oh, yeah, I got a lot of those things. Those are good spots. Like a lot of people I noticed went um, construction sites. They always get the green wood, and people always buff that shit. Like they literally buff it the next two, three days. Some of it, if it gets the wheat paste over it, they'll leave it. But then you got these idiots to throw that wheat paste over it. If you look at that blockbuster I did down in that park, it was like 72. And I knew that would happen because I peeled a bunch of wheat paste off it. Down there on Farsight and Christie Street. I did that thing. I was just doing it for a video. I got these people making a documentary. So I did it for them. I knew if I got caught, what are they going to do? They're just going to make me pay for the wood. The wood was all water rot and shit like that anyway. So I was right near the court system too, pretty much. But I was like, fuck, what are they going to charge me $200 or something? Like, fuck that. I didn't worry about it too much. But yeah, the same thing. Like... Maybe 48 hours, 72 hours later, you couldn't even see the RD blockbuster. And the thing was huge, man. It was like 50 feet long, 60 feet long, maybe. That was big blockbuster. I took my time. I, it's on my videos, if you look at it. It's right. It's, it's a, Yeah, it's on, um, I think it's called my blockbuster. If you look down a bunch of videos of the summer, probably around August. -y. Yeah, you look at them videos, you see a big, huge blockbuster. I did. 
48 hours later, it was gone, completely gone. People put those pastes right over you. It looked like it was never even there. I didn't give a fuck. I, I was just doing it, like I said, for the documentary, you know. But, yeah, they got rid of it. And also, a lot of people scheme on that green mesh that they use over the gate. I don't know. That's kind of stupid, too, because it's cheap, and they replace it. They can replace it very quickly and easily and sufficiently. Like, boom, you buy that shit at Home Depot. You buy a whole roll of it, six, seven bucks. I don't know. Nowadays, you got the Putin prices, gas and whatnot. Maybe it's different. But, yeah, that's easy for them to replace. But those green barrier things, man, those are the fucking shit. Yeah, I tell you, I'd kill them things. I got video footage of me. I should put it on here. I put it on my Patreon. Well, I'm killing like 50 of them fucking things in a row, man. <laughs> I don't fuck around. No, for real. I'm like, boom, 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 boom. Yo, I'll sit on a fucking skateboard and just go along that shit. That all they'll see is like this much of my head. Like, <laughs> going by. I'll sit on a skateboard and just go by one after the other. Like a whole row of them fucking things. I didn't give a fuck. Hell yeah. Yo, them things last. And you know what turned me on to that whole idea? Actually, date that just passed away, I was talking to him, Date and KD, KDE and A. Emmer. I was telling them, we saw one of these orange things, we were out writing graffiti one night, and I was like, yo, you see that fucking thing? <laughs> I was like, yo, I noticed, I told them in the car, I said, look, you know, I saw one of those a couple of months ago, and I swear, I did the tag like 12 years before that. And it's in front of me. I said, I know I do a lot of them and shit, but I swear that tag was like 12 fucking years old, man. <laughs> and I was like, that, I was like, yo, those are the shits to get, you know. And we were actually going to start scheming on them, but we never did. But I continued on with those fucking things. If I see them like that, boom, 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 arty, 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 that whole fucking all of them, orange, white, whatever, man. Yeah, I'll catch them fucking things all day, man. Those are the best things. I'm not going to lie to you guys right now. Those are the best fucking things you could catch in them streets right now. Yeah, in my opinion, those are the best fucking things you can catch. They, you know, people get in touch with me. They see them fucking things in Pennsylvania and shit like that. You know, them fucking little orange things, man. They get around, man. Believe me. You look at me, I tear that shit up. I, I'm gonna, As a matter of fact, I should put some footage on. I wish I could show it to you somehow just right now, but... I can't. It's in the computer. Maybe there is a way to do that. I don't know how I would do it. Hey, Bobby. Let me ask my son. He might know. Give me a second. Yeah, no, I go off on them fucking things. Man. I love that shit. Man. Hold on a second, people. Hey, Bobby. Yeah, my son, he's not even here. He must have stepped out. I didn't realize it. But, yeah, no, nah, those orange things are real good, man. Hell, yeah. I catch a whole block of them. I'm going to put together a video, and I'm going to drop it right after I'm done here tonight. I'm going to chop them all up and throw them on there, man. That's the shit they got. Those orange things, the orange and their white, and they don't give a fuck about it. You know, I see some of them things. They got, like, Danielle uh, construction and this and that. And they'll put their logo right over my tag. I don't give a fuck. You can still see the RD. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, those are good, man. Oh, yeah. Those are good. As a matter of fact, I put a small shorts on of a guy carrying one on his head while riding a city bike. Right? He's got one on his head like this and shit. Yeah. Yeah, no, I smashed those things. Right, let me see where we were here. Yeah, so you saw one of love from Ireland. All right. Shout outs from Ireland. Yo, you want to hear something? For you guys out in Ireland, I want to show you something here. Can you read it? I'm not done with it, of course. I'm going to do it nice. But it's a two by four, right? Actually, this is a two by six. Well, look. Yeah, start here at this end. See, everything's backwards. Armalite 180. That's a fucking tag, man. Armalite 180. Uh, 
Tell me no, man. Armalite. <laughs> 180. That's a tag. I wish I would have thought of that shit in the fucking 80s. You do arm fillings all over the place. <laughs> no, it's a good tag, man. Armalite. 180. Uh, that's that serious shit right there, right? Tell them what that is. The shout outs to Ireland. That's the 180. The AR-180, not the AR-18. <laughs> yeah, the AR-180. Right. Uno, that's what his question. Do you think you've been getting more recognition since starting your channel? I've seen more and more of your stuff on the internet now. Even on TikTok, people posting your work. I don't know. I don't go on TikTok, but... um. No, I think what it is is maybe you see me here and you never knew I existed. Maybe the only way you'd probably know I've existed was maybe with that Espo book, The Art of Getting Over in the New Millennium, where uh, we talk about Chino beating me up. But being that might be the only little spark in your mind about me. You think, oh, yeah, this, that. But now after you hear me talking, it starts popping up. It's like, all right, this happens to me a lot when I'm on here. Someone will say something in here, and I'm like, nah, I never heard of you. Never heard of it. And then it's all, and all of a sudden, I'm riding around on my bicycle. I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. You know, you get me? Like, that's how it is. Like, once it's brought to your attention, probably. Like, the pictures were probably always there, because I don't notice any uptick or downtick. I mean, there's a few people out there, I guess people that um, uh, it, it, uh, aren't favored on here, like people that have, I've, I speak the truth, 100%. You might hear people talk stupid shit about me, oh, he's a drug addict, he's this, he's fucking that, or whatever. You won't hear anyone say I'm lying. You know, that, I'll tell you, that's all that matters. <laughs> and, you know, some people get upset. So there's people out there that start the little memes and shit like that about me. And haters. I mean, I went over a lot of fucking people. I had war with the whole fucking city. All five fucking boroughs was coming on my ass. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people out there, you know, man, you can let people know. I had beef. <laughs> I, I was probably, I'm probably the fucking... The grandfather of that shit. <laughs> like, yo, for real, I crossed out more whole cars than cap and PC in my time and in my life. Whole cars, whole cars that weren't even seeing the public yet. Yeah, I've crossed out more than cap and PC. I have. I'll say that right now. Yeah, that have not even ran yet. I'd go in that fucking Tishman and under Central Park there. I'd go in there like 15 minutes before they pull out. The trains have been in there all fucking weekend. And I'd go in like, as the lights are going on, I already destroyed all the fucking graffiti. All my enemies that were on them trains, I already got. And the motor man will come through, turn the lights on, the conductor will get in the train. I'm already on the next train. And I literally, I've asked Ven. Ven has actually did articles and interviews about it where I've destroyed like whole trains that they were trying to pull off. Whole Easter trains. The 10 whole cars, gone, didn't even see light. Not one person sat on the platform and got to see that shit run at all. The only people that saw it was them that did it and me that destroyed it. Straight up, me and John John, JJ. Yeah, true fucking story. <laughs> so I got a lot of people out there that don't like me. That's the bottom line. And they might put some stupid shit on there, but I don't really notice, like any positive uptick in my stuff uh, as far as it goes with what's being posted. But then again, I'm not really so internet suave. I mean, I, I got my Instagram account. I come on here and I talk and stuff. But other than that, you know, I'm not really like in it like that. I, I do other things with my life, you know. You know, I'll tell you what's interesting too. It's just something I've noticed. Yeah. With people, I should you save that for a whole other episode, uh, where it's like you got people that try to interwind into your life, and then when you're just not vibing like that, all of a sudden you become an enemy or something. You, you follow me? So yeah, yeah, it's a lot of weird shit out there. But other than that, I don't see any uptick in positive stuff. I see more negative, if anything.
All right, let's get back into some questions here. All right, question, do you think you've been getting more recognition? So I, I pretty much answered that, right? Like I said, uh, there's people out there, even back in the days and shit, you meet someone in the tunnel or something or someone that's hitting the layup or something, and you're like, yeah, this, and then later on, like a couple months later, they explode, and you're like, oh, shit, yo, I met that dude. <laughs> oh, I remember, yo, this, that, you know? So, yeah, it's different. But I, I don't personally notice that. You know what else might be happening to you? Being you come on here, and this channel is called RD357, you're putting that into your search engine. So now when you come on, more things associated with me are RD357, so to say, will probably pop up more in your feed. That makes sense, too. But no, I do not think that. As a matter of fact, I had a whole different opinion, a whole opposite opinion on what's actually happened here. I came on here real defensive and ready to fucking blah. And everyone's been doing nothing but showing me mad love, man. You know, and a lot of respect. I, I you know, a lot of the people, you know, most of the people I even have beef with, you know, I talk on here, hey, he, he, you know, it's all in the past. I was a teenager or whatever. You know what I'm saying? As far as it goes to subways and shit, you know. So it's all good. I got no problems with no one. You know, everyone really very friendly, you see, on here. I mean, you might have one or two assholes like the other day. What were they talking about? Uh, RD, teach me how to fart or some shit. You know, you always have an asshole like that. But hell, I could be sitting here reading the Bible and people say stuff like that on here. So that doesn't bother me. All right. So where were we? Uh, hey, Ro. <laughs> uh, let me see. I had a question. All right. Ro, Ro G, what's up? All right. Hey, R.D., hope you're good. Thanks again for making the gift for Brett happen. We need a part three. And Yeah, definitely. NYC Crime Spot. Yo, check it out, people. I dropped some pretty good episodes on there, too, with them, man. You guys should check them out. NYC Crime Spot. Give them a like. Give them a subscribe. All right. Gizmo, I'm from Vermont. And some pieces last until the paint fades. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of them around here that I've done when I was younger. RDs. There's one on 80 on um, 70th Street and 71st Street. I did that shit in 1987. Yeah, I was hanging off a fence and a little piece of um, like BX cable that runs through some metal shit. And this lady started, old lady started hit me in the head with a broom from her window. I guess she thought I was trying to climb in a window or something. Yeah, I slid down. I was married at the time. I had my wedding ring on it. One of the nails on the wall actually caught right on my ring like this. And my feet were like maybe five feet off the ground at that point, six feet off the ground. And D3, he had to come over. He grabbed me like this around my my shins and pulled up like that. Yeah, it got me off the fucking um, the nail thing. I walked away. But, yo, that shit's still there till today. That was like 1987 I did that shit, 1988. It's still up there, too. It's an RD. It's actually a fill-in. It's, it's a small fill-in. Still till today, is that. Do you figure 87? That's a good while ago. All right. Celine Distortion. As a New York writer who was around during the early years of graffiti, when did you realize that writing was becoming a worldwide phenomenon, and how did you feel about it? Uh, all right, I've been doing that. Like That's like what everyone asks me every time. But in, in a quick nutshell, as a New York writer who was around during the earlier years, like before I got started, you had like FDT 56, all them 56 guys, Kid 56, all Salsa. Yeah, all that shit was around. You had Moose, Dell. Uh, yeah, uh, Dell was here. He had recently passed away. Um, Tracy 168 was up. I mean, I'm talking before my time, of course. You know, just about all the guys in Style Wars, the movie. Yeah, all those guys were up a lot. Um, yeah. As far as it goes with the streets, you had Zephyr. He had a lot of streets in Manhattan. Uh, Zephyr, he used to write with this guy, Yogurt. He also had Tex 2, like T-E-X, the number two, and Shark. Shark and Tex 2. 
and they used to hang out with Kid Panama, who also was up a lot in this neighborhood, and he would do ick, I-C-K tags. Yeah, I remember I-C-K, like Randall's in the schoolyard, ick, Kid Panama. Um, all those RTW guys early on, yeah, all those guys, Dark Star, uh, Soul Artists also, uh, uh, Pre Sweet. Flasher, uh, all that shit. Just about everything you had heard of. I'm like the generation that was young at that point, you know, but picking that shit. And what was the rest of it? And when did I realize that writing was becoming a worldwide phenomenon? I didn't, I, I'll tell you. Like I said about with this Espo guy, you know, when he all oh, this, that, and the book, and this, and that. You know, I thought he was talking about like a little zine or something like that in the 90s or something. But um, I'm not really into fashion. I uh, I did know Wayne and them were bouncing around a little early on, uh, PMB and stuff, post no bills, right? Uh, other than that, Mark Echo. Uh, so I started saying, wow, you know, I guess it's just like a trend in fashion, you know, with the the next it thing, I, I figured it would fizzle out or whatever, but I was also aware of the galleries and, you know, Dondi and all them going, uh, what was it, Sharp, Delta, shit like that, right? Didn't they go do something for the Pope or something like that? In Italy or some shit early on in the early 80s, right? You had a few things like that. Then you had the Astor family, Patty Astor. She would jump around. She seemed interested in it. Deborah Harry, Blondie. So, you know, it, it, there was a little spark, but, you know, I just thought it was nothing more than underground, like St. Mark's Place type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't think I'd really uh, bounce up to anything. Now, how do I feel about where it is? Uh, well, how'd you word it? Uh, writing was becoming a worldwide phenomenon. So I guess around that period of time that I just mentioned. And how did you feel about it? All right. Now, as I say all the time, I'm a criminal that wrote graffiti back then. So we didn't really bounce with the whole gallery scene. We were more or less robbing and stealing shit and writing graffiti on our spare time. So it's a different character. Just like you had dudes, as someone had mentioned, you know, they have a big skateboard community that writes graffiti. And um, that's pretty popular, more so probably on the West Coast. But, you know, it's like a little like subsect of graffiti. So you had street kids that wrote graffiti, you know, people that were out there fucking robbing and stealing and writing graffiti and, you know, into vandalism. A couple of them were real good, with nice pieces and shit like that. And, you know, uh, uh, probably like a uh, fatherless home or something like that. Juvenile centers locked up, shit like that, similar to me. You know what I'm saying? And Spoff and all that shit. So they weren't necessarily your graffiti writer that wrote graffiti. In other words, pretty much as far as their criminal career would go is maybe they'd steal a couple of cans of spray paint, something like that. Maybe a black book, a couple of designer markers, just utensils to perform graffiti. Now, as a street kid, it's a criminal that wrote graffiti. You out there robbing and fucking stealing everything, and you writing graffiti on your spare time. That's pretty much a difference. And then you also had these people that kind of had intentions on galleries. Early on, the Lower East Side, you had people popping off down there, right? Uh, what, Keith Herring and stuff like that, which I didn't like the stuff. I kicked that guy in the balls once. Yeah, for real. I did. A, I put a thing on my Patreon about it. I actually kicked Keith Herring in the balls. Yeah, I caught him doing one of the things once. <laughs> I caught him doing one of the shits was in Bloomdale train station. I uh, went Lace, I think D3. <laughs> I kicked the no Frank Chambell, sire was there. And I came up as he was doing, I came up behind him. Like, you know, like he's like this, right? I came up behind him, kicked right like that. But my foot went right up into his balls and everything. He, oh, 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 and then I came up on him from behind. Boom! <laughs> Locked his ass on the floor. And she, <laughs> I just kept walking. I remember Lacey's like, yo, what the fuck? Why'd you do that, man? Like, oh, fuck him, man. <laughs> I was young. <laughs> but yeah, true story. <laughs> I'm from Vermont. Blah, 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 blah. So I don't like it. I, I um, It's got nothing to do with the shit that we were doing. 
uh, what's going on out there now. It's, you know, like, uh, as far as it goes with, um, nothing wrong with profiting off it, I guess, uh, but in a sense, like, you know, a lot of people, as a matter of fact, with my last video, a lot of people would say, oh, wow, you know, I, you know, I did this, actually, I still have it here, yo, Ro, I'm going to show it now, yeah, uh, like, you know, I did a video of me doing this thing, step by step. So people are like, wow, man, you got skills, man. You should do galleries, this, that. And I've done gallery shows. I've done the ones um, with Skid and uh, uh, Lord Ezek, uh, Danny Diablo. I've done uh, Out in the Hamptons. I did one with my man, O.R. I mean, it was a solo show, but he's the one who hooked me up with the spot. You know, I, I've done them, but, you know, I've come to the realization that, like, I don't want to be that guy. Like, I'm not, like, I don't want to be like an artist in an art gallery, like that's not an, ins like something I inspire to be in life. It's, it's not an interest to me. I mean, I, I don't mind money. <laughs> you don't get me wrong on that part, but like, I don't want to be like some artsy fartsy fucking dude with like my pinky out drinking champagne, trying to like hustle someone into buying a piece of my artwork. It's just not me. I don't want to be seen like that. It's, not anything I thrive for in life. You know, I, I sit here, I've been drawing and twinkling around with shit my whole life. You know, I know where I stand in, in, in the art world and what it's all about. I just, I don't see myself like that. Like smoozing and stuff. I'm kind of more like, I'm not that social. Like, um, It takes a lot to warm up to, you know, like I'm not quick, like you might think differently. I'm coming on here, pouring my heart out to you people. I don't really pour my heart out. You never see me complain or bitch or anything like that. But, you will uh, you know, it's I guess I'm like an open book, I would say on here. But in reality, uh, like Robert, the person, it's like, yeah, I'm a little standoffish. I'm not quick to let people in my life. All the people I did let in my life that I grew up with are pretty much dead or in prison, uh, including my own brother. And I just, uh, you know, I got my son here and I'm just trying to live my life. And, you know, that's another interesting thing that comes up. I want, I said uh, there was some interesting topic and you guys rolled me right into it perfectly. I couldn't have scripted this shit better. What was your question originally anyway? <laughs> uh, you know, for, for my, as a New Yorker writer, blah, 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 all about that. I don't know what that's got to do with anything, but. Last live, you know, they were talking about New York City and how fucked it up it is. And Rob, you know, what are you doing? And you know, I have people out there that do care about me and love me in this world. And they ask me the same thing. You know, like a lot of people really aren't around in New York anymore. Hardly anyone's. This is how it all came about, I believe, like my New York accent or something like that. And everyone's like, yo, like, like everyone's moving. Like, there's hardly anyone around. I still see some old school guys that I grew up with and shit. People I hung out with, they were like family. You know, and I see them walk around. They have how old I am now. I'm 55 years old. And I see them, you know, we look at each other. Hey, there he is. You know, we just nod and keep walking. It's like as simple as that. And these are people I grew up with. And we got beat up together. We beat people up together. We robbed. We stole. And it's turned into nothing but just a, a nod, like, yo, what's up? How you doing? You know, if we do actually happen to be online together, maybe buying a gallon of milk or something, and it's, how's it going? You know, this, that, yeah, you know, this, that, this one died, that one died, and that's it. That's the end of the conversation. In other words, there's really nothing keeping me here in New York City anymore. However, I am here. My son's 21. I got a nice apartment here on the Upper East Side. I had it for quite a while, so the rent's not that expensive. And I, I could retire and leave and go wherever the fuck I want. I mean, I squirreled away money. Don't get me wrong. I um, I have been breaking into it a lot. You know, just the way the world is. You spend a little more here and there. But in reality, I could up and leave. I have a piece of land out in Jamaica in the West Indies. You know, my son's mother was Jamaican from Jamaica. And, you know, I have a little lot of land down there. I could go down there and live whenever the fuck I want. And I just don't have any plans. Like, as crazy as it sounds, I really didn't think about 
growing old. Like that shit never came to my mind. And I actually got like letters in the mail saying like my whole retirement and everything, you know, I worked for the city of New York. I worked for the department of health. It's no secret. It was all over the newspaper. When I got arrested, I worked for the tuberculosis unit. Uh, so, I, you know, there's nothing to hide there, but in reality, I could leave whenever the fuck I want, but I think I'm scared. I think I'm a little bitch, like a little pussy ass bitch for real, because you think about it. Like, I don't know anything else. I don't know anything other than what I'm doing now. Like, yeah, sure. I could retire and get my retirement. And then when I turn 65, I could get social security. Hell, you know, I'm even eligible for SSD. I've been eligible for SSD for like 20 fucking years ago. Yeah, I'm all fucked up. Yeah, like SSD, like for disabilities. Yeah, on paper, I'm a fucking retard, yo. <laughs> for real, <laughs> you look at me on paper, <laughs> shit, I'm all fucked up. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I never took, no, I never did that. I never went on welfare. I never collected food stamps. I never, ever did that. My mother never did that. My father never did that. And I'll tell you, my mother, God rest her soul, she would actually babysit children that were older than me and my brother. She would leave me and my brother home while she could babysit children that were older than us just to make money, to make ends meet. She would not take a penny from my father when they got divorced. She didn't want no child support, no alimony, no nothing. She raised me and my brother off of simply fucking working, babysitting, eh, babysitting and cleaning people's houses. My father, you know, he would always hook us up. He was always a part of my life and everything. But getting back to it all, yeah, I could leave whenever I want. And I keep coming up with excuses. It's like there's really nothing holding me here now. Like it's almost like not to sound bad or nothing, but like the white man is bad. Like I, it's, it's, it's really bad out there. You know, as far as it goes with society, everything costs a lot of money. People are nasty and mean to me. You know what I mean? Like seriously, people spit on me when I get home. I got spit on my fucking jacket and people yelling stuff it, like on certain occasions. I'm not saying it happens every day, but it has happened. And uh, it's just, it's not that I guess, you know what it is? I feel like I could confront it. And be like, yo, fuck that. Like, I'm better than that. Like, I ain't going to let that shit phase me. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's old school shit, man. That's like, and you can't just like, you know, like, I'm a man. I'm a man and I like women. You know what I mean? I ain't into all that crazy shit. And I'm wired that way since the 60s, man. Since the 1960s, I am who I am. You know what I'm saying? So I can't, like, just flip that shit around because someone says something else, you know? So it's like, if I'm offending anyone or something, Hey, I'm just me, you know? And like, you really sit back and you look at this whole fucking thing and how shit got all twisted. I guess anywhere in America at this point, this shit's going on. So I, it's not like I would be able to hide from it or, or it's almost like I don't want to hide from it. I'm like, yo, you know, like you're going to bring this shit to my face. Like I ain't moving. You know what I'm saying? Like someone's got to stand up. You know what I'm saying? And I, that's just the way I feel. I, 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 I've i never been one to cower. And I feel like if leaving New York is like me putting my tail between my legs and leaving. Like I could tell myself that. I could lie to myself. Yeah, fuck that. Man. I ain't letting no one move me out of here. I got this nice apartment. They don't have to drag my dead ass body out of here. I can run all that shit in my mind I want. But in reality, I think I'm afraid of change. Like, I've actually tried to change. I went down to Jamaica, the West Indies, to live. I married a woman I fell madly in love with. I had a son from her. And it backfired. She got murdered. I came back to New York and America, and I made this whole big change. And, you know, everything. I, I sold houses that I owned, actually, in Queens. And I bounced. I, I really put I, I was never going to come back to America. And this was 21 years ago. My son's 21 years old now. And I, she got murdered. I grabbed my son. I bounced out of there. I got chopped up pretty fucking bad. Right down my whole shoulder here with a machete. Shit broke out down there in Jamaica, the West Indies. Didn't work out. So I came back here and I've been in survival mode. Like I'm a father. I got to take care of my son. I got to raise my son. I got to raise my son, 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 son. You know, and it's like that's all I've been doing for the past 21 years other than graffiti. And it's kind of like now I don't have to do that. He's 21 years old. He's making more money than me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like his paintings are fucking banging, y'all. Go check him out. Bobby 
underscore underscore dire. That's B O B B Y underscore underscore dire. D Y E R. Check out his artwork. Really off the hook. And it's almost like I feel like I'm not as important in his life. Like I could get caught doing something stupid now and go to jail for a year or two. It's no big deal. Like he'll be able to afford the apartment and shit like that. And, you know, but I'm really not like that no more. Like after my marriage and after I've gotten divorced back then, like in 94, 95, shit like that, I really wasn't doing no more crime like that. I mean, yeah, all right, I'll steal toilet paper and stuff to wipe my ass with. I just won't ever buy toilet paper. That's just some weird shit again, you know? But, like, as far as it goes with, like, breaking into apartments and shit and this and that, no, I didn't. I wrote graffiti. I continued writing graffiti, yes. But I bought my spray paint. Like, I didn't even steal the spray paint. Like, once I was of legal age, I keep saying that, I never stole spray paint again. Like, once I was legally allowed to buy it, I'd steal a bunch of shit, and I'd sell that and buy spray paint. But I'd never, you know, once I'm legally allowed to buy spray paint, I didn't have to steal it no more. I would just... Buy it with stolen money. And getting back to this whole thing, like I could honestly retire. Like I have the paperwork in front of me and I've been sitting here trying to think of a plan. Like what do I think I would like to do with the rest of my life? Uh, you know, I've just been in go mode all the time. Like just like I said with graffiti early on in my life, I write graffiti, write graffiti, write graffiti. Every so often you pop your head up, you know, some baby's born or your friend dies or some shit. You sit back, you think, and you go back, right back down, write graffiti, write graffiti. You know, just little pops through life. But I really didn't plan on a retirement. <laughs> I didn't have it in my cards. I didn't think I'd make it this far to be truthful. Yeah. And that's deep. Like I'm you know, I'm getting letters from the, like my work, you know, like, yo, you, you could like retire and here's the different programs and this and that and blah, 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 blah. And the different uh, 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 situations that it could fall and how much money I could do and this and that. And I mean, uh, if I stayed till I was 62, it would only be like an extra hundred dollars. And that's like, what, I'm 55 now. That's like another seven, eight years from now. I'm like, fuck that. Like I could bounce, but it's not the money, you know, uh, like I said, I, I squirrel money away. A lot of people might think I'm some kind of drug addict or this and that through rumors and stuff, but I, I'm not, I really not like, uh, <laughs> I'm addicted to cigarettes. That was about it. And even that I cut down on, I just smoked my marijuana, you know, I had a job my whole life. Like once I got arrested and people found out, oh shit, research scientist, department of health, what? <laughs> You're like, what the fuck? I thought he was a bum. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, I, I think it takes you scared. You know, you, I, I'm scared to close this chapter in my life and move on to another chapter. Like no one wants to say they're on their final path. You know what I mean? Uh, like that's like a deep thing, you know? By the way, the shirt is not pink. It's salmon, okay? But, yeah, it's like, you know, it's almost... I've been alive more years than I could possibly be alive in the future. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to see another 55 years on this earth, obviously. But uh, you get what I'm saying. It's like... <coughs> I've been taking it easy. And since last Wednesday, I've been thinking about this shit a lot, especially this guy died, that he retired from my work. Dr. John Kornblum he just died. Had four horses, nice Harley Davidson, lives up in uh, above Westchester there, a big piece of land and everything. He died. Fucking guy retired eight years ago, man. Eight years ago. I'm like, wow, this guy only had eight fucking years, man. My father, I've said before, he retired, and his first fucking retirement check was in the mailbox when me and my brother were ripping through his house looking for wills and shit like that when he died. Yeah, for real, out in Long Island, his first fucking paycheck. He retired. He was dead three weeks later, man. And I'm like, yo, oh, that's not me, man. I don't want to do that shit, you know? But I sit back and I think about it, and just because someone's working doesn't mean they're not having a good time. It's also the saying that if you do what you love, it's like you've never worked a day in your life or if you get paid for what you you love doing it's like you're not working and that used to be the case with the department of health but not no more man not no more like that shit's getting like woke is the word like bad in that area you know for me they just fired um 
I shouldn't say the word fired. Don't want to get in trouble or anything. But yeah, like the head of the place, you know. So I don't know. It's it's. Uh, I'm in a situation now where I could leave whenever I want. And do I want to continue tolerating this bullshit? And then, like I said, the fight in me. Oh, you know, get your Irish up or something like that. It's like, yo, fuck that, man. I let no one do nothing like that, man. You know, that just comes from me walking this earth in the era and time of life that I've walked this earth. You know, I'm like, oh, I never let no one move me out of nothing. <laughs> hey, no, nah, that shit ain't happening, you know. But sometimes you got to know when to throw the towel in and move on with your life. Like, what do I give a fuck? Like, any one of us could drop the fuck dead tomorrow, you know. And it's not like I'm afraid of dying. That's not the case. But I'd like to live a little, <laughs> you know. Like, hey, don't tell it. I, uh, believe me, I had a good fucking long, nice life so far, man. I can't complain about anything, man. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. I had a fucking blast. I would not change a damn thing, man. I had a pisser, you know. <laughs> Definitely had a good time out there, but don't think that. But now in the winding down and being faced with retirement and shit, it's weird. Uh, I don't know. Does anyone else feel that way? Any of you people my age or what, man? It's crazy shit. You know, it's like you always wait for that moment. Oh, I can't wait to retire. I can't wait to retire. I can't wait to retire. But now, like, I could actually retire and I'm not gone nowhere. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I spent the past couple of decades bitching about, damn, I can't wait till I retire. The moment I can retire. Like, now you could have been retired. Fucking retire, motherfucker. <laughs> you know, it's weird. But it's, I, I believe it's like a safety net. You know, it's it's almost like a child not wanting to leave his mother's house because he's got all the conveniences that he needs. Like that job has supported me for 30 something years. You know, I've worked for the city of New York for 30 something fucking years. So it's. I won't miss anyone there. No one I give a fuck about. I, I, a couple of people in the office I like. My head supervisor's cool, shit like that. But other than that, there's no like real friendships or anything like that, you know. And there's really nothing holding me there. There's actually nothing holding me into New York. Yeah, there's nothing holding me here at all. I, I also could come up with the simple argument that, oh, well, my son, you know, he's 21 years old. And, you know, uh, let me stick around a little longer or something like that. And, you know, but then that you got to wonder, like, when is the proper time to set a child free? You know, like this does saying goes or whatever, like when you have the birds in the nest, the mother bird throws the baby birds out the nest and they either fly or they go <laughs> thunk, and they hit the ground. You know, it's like eventually you got to get them out the nest. Not like getting them out the nest, but I could get out the nest. Like he could afford this rent and everything like that. Like, you know, maybe I'm, it's unhealthy in his areas. You know, like I didn't, I, I was on my own since like 16, 17 years old, not physically on my own, but I was out all night doing what I want. My mother, pretty much suffered from alcoholism so i could pretty much had a run in a land if i could say i mean shit some nights would be 14 15 years old i'd be living in manhattan on the upper east side i'd be jumping around up in the bronx right and graffiti on the six trains yeah <laughs> middle town road and shit like that i'd be out in the fucking yeah up in the sixes or anywhere man. i'd be all over the fucking any five borough anywhere i'd wind up at 15 16 years old four or five in the morning yeah didn't matter to me but, yeah, so to answer your questions from last week, I don't know what the fuck I'm still doing here, honestly. Then there's a part of me with this whole graffiti thing that keeps me here. You know, like I said, I'm retired from graffiti, but am I really? You know, <clears throat> like some of you guys probably see what I'm talking about, you know. All right, so let me get off all that shit. As a New Yorker writing, blah, 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 blah. I think I really went into your question. You see, I go into this deep shit, man. I smoke cigarettes. I mean, I smoke my, my marijuana here. And I start breaking into wild shit. And then you guys leave all these comments. And so now I got to scroll through. And that's how these trolls get me. You know, they're like, it's 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 Sir Dick-a-Lot or something like that. You know, you kill trolls. So I'm going to be careful. I'm not reading them motherfucking shit no more. But with me saying that actually amplifies up their trolling game. You know, I, I, I got to realize it, you know, like I'm feeding into it just by mentioning it. All right, so where were we here? Ba -ba -ba -ba, set it off, RD. All right, ba -ba -ba -ba, Michael River. Yeah, I was all the way up here still. Patrick, do you remember this and that? All right. Uh, right uh, CX, I'm just going to call you Rain, man. Is that good? CX Rain? 
I see X Brain. You cool with Comet and Blade? Yeah, I love that shit, man. Big fan, man. Big fan. Love that shit. Pretty sweet. Hell yeah. All right. A, B, C, G about N, L, G. That spray paint. All right. N, L, G. That spray paint kind of messed up your brain. All right. Uh, I lean them presses. You did a RD on York and 75th F fill in at my cousin's building around 2004, 2005. My cousin was the super and we let it rock since me and his son like graffiti. Thank you, RD. <laughs> How long ago was that? 2005? Yeah, I can picture that. All right, uh, Keith Heron made it big doing art that a little kid can do. Exactly, yeah. All right, Michael Rebick, nice fire hydrant. Row, row. All right, she deleted it. Right. Mr. D.B. Cooper, 456. Futura was a gallery king. Yeah, like I didn't want to be a, like noticed or something like that, you know? Like I don't want to make my money that way. You know, there's so much shit you could do out here. I don't need to do that. I'd rather come on here and talk shit. I mean, not like I make money off this. Honestly, I'm not fucking monetized on here at all. I mean, people want to give me money going to my Patreon account. But I'm not monetized. If I was, you would see a little thing where you could send me little gifts and shit like that. I, am I planning on retiring? So, that, yeah, that's what we've been getting into. Uh, yeah, I am, man. But I, I believe I'm scared. Like, there's something fucking holding. Like, I just can't. Like, it's like smoking cigarettes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to smoke no more. But, you know, it's like, after you start getting, uh, you know, you start getting cranky and shit. Ah, one more cigarette. It's like, yeah, like, I just, I don't know. Somehow it's like, um, I don't know. It's not like I'm um, scared of change. I think that shit in Jamaica fucked me up. I mean, I got chopped up by a machete. My baby's mother got murdered. So I, I and that's like the last time I honestly tried to change my life and like put everything behind me and everyone behind me. And I almost died and my baby's mother did die. So I think that might be somehow like subconsciously fucking me up. Maybe. I don't know. But I don't let shit like that get in my way. If I'm going to make the charge, if it seems logically sane, I'll do it. Like, I, I know how to put shit behind me. I know how to swallow shit. Man. Believe me, I'm good at that. If it looks good on paper and it seems like the most logical answer to the situation that I'm currently in, then that's what I do. Like, that's how I don't go by, like, feelings or emotions and shit because <laughs> it's just all fucked up. <laughs> like I said, I, on paper, I'm literally like a retard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, sad story. Yeah, yeah, it is sad story. I don't want to sit here getting into all that shit, but, yeah, Jack Alexander, yes, she did get murdered, yeah. All right, this is deep, yeah. So, you know, I mean, anyone, that would fuck anyone's head up. I mean, I never went to any type of therapy, and I was, once again, in juvenile centers, uh, as a child, I was mean, Spofford, 13, 14, 15 years old, man, and then all these places up there, like in Westchester and shit like that, and Horton, Lincoln Hall, fucking uh, Pleasantville Cottages and shit. You know, uh, yeah, all those places up there, and you're fucking around, you got to speak to social workers and shit like that, and, you know, all this crazy shit. So I don't like them people fucking with me. I, I had bad experiences as a teenager growing up in the juvenile system. And hell, even the truancy programs and shit like that had you seeing people. So, yeah, I don't fuck with stuff like that, man. I don't like people telling me how shit should be, you know. I also, I did because of my job. After I'd come back, of course, I lost a lot of weight. I got chopped up. Uh, my baby's mother died. I had my full-grown father straight on through. Boom, boom, boom. The baby got to drink milk. The baby got to this, that. Got to change his diaper. You know, I was very thin, very frail. Wasn't talking to anyone. Had rings around my eyes and shit. Just going to work like a fucking zombie. So they reported me. They said, this dude's not doing shit. He's bugging out or something or another. Um, staring off or whatever they want to call it. So they had me see this guy. Uh, what do they call it again? Um, employee Assistance Program, EAP. So 
I go see this guy, psychiatrist, full blown motherfucker. And I've I've seen, like I said, uh, on paper, you know, <laughs> you look at me in all them juvenile centers and shit, you know, I bugged out shit. So you know, on paper, yeah. But I go see this guy. You know, I shake his hand. Hi, my name is Robert Dyer. His name's so and so. He was actually in the Flatiron Building on Twenty Third Street on Broadway. There, his office was in the Flatiron Building. So I go in, you know, I shake his hand. You know, first thing he does, pulls out and starts writing down. And this is when they would write scripts. You know, he starts writing out like prescriptions on a fucking prescription pad. <clears throat> oh, okay, so this one. And I'm like, fuck, I told you my name, bro. And he, like, he had the couch there. I just sat on it normally and shit. I'm like, fuck, man. I just told you my name and you're like handing me prescriptions? And he's like, yeah, well, you know, I, I uh, from talking to you on the phone, uh, uh, your rapid thoughts, uh, uh, racing thoughts. Uh, you're talking fast. You this, you that. Uh, you, you've expressed that your baby's mother had died, and uh, this and that. And you've reached out, and I understand you're having problems at work where uh, they're saying you're staring off into space. I said I am doing my job. My job is getting done 100. percent And I myself uh, feel as if there's no problems in those areas at all. I, nowhere in my job description does it say that I have to associate with anyone or say good morning to anyone or anything like that. All I got to do is my work here. It does not matter. I, I don't have to say anything to my colleagues at all. I'm not a supervisor or anything like that. I come here, I do my work, I go home. I got nothing in common with these people. That's the way I put it. And I said, but yes, a woman died. She got murdered, brutally murdered. But how is you writing me prescriptions? Oh, well, you must be feeling horrible. You must be uh, feeling this. And I'm like, yeah, a woman I love is dead. So, yes, of course, I'm going to feel that way. But taking pills isn't going to help anything. Like, what the fuck? Like, that's just going to bury it. As long as you take the pills. And one day you don't got the pills. Oh, she's dead. Oh, no. You got me. So, it, like, no, that's a grieving process. It's very important. I've lost a lot of people in my life. I lost everyone. Just about everyone, except for D3. I think even Lace is gone by now. I haven't heard from him from over a year. <laughs> but, yeah, so I, everyone. And even just the other day, like, there's really no one around uh, that I've grew up with and hung out with, like, on a day-to-day. -day. I mean, like I said, I see people in my neighborhood and stuff. But, you know, I've been far distanced from them for 20-something years now. We see each other. We shake our head or something. You know, that's about it. You know, but, yeah, it is, it's like offering me a prescription for feeling sad about someone that passed away. Like, what am I, what happens when I feel happy when a baby is born or, or I, I get good news? You got a promotion at work. Like, these are emotions. These are feelings. Like, these are hardwired shit. Like, you're not supposed to alter that shit. You're supposed to ride the fucking wave and go through it. Like, no, I, I feel as if the mourning process is beautiful. Like, I would never, like, me taking some kind of a medication or something, I feel as if I'd be disrespectful to the woman that had passed away, which his name was Katie Ann Burchell. So I feel as if it's almost disrespectful to her to feel as if I have to take some kind of a medication because of mourning her or something. I'm like, I got a fucking child to take care of. That's what I told the guy. I said, if you want to help me, I said, teach me how to change a fucking diaper. <laughs> <laughs> teach me when milk is too hot and too cold and shit like that. Like I need like some kind of parenting courses. <laughs> I've read all these books. I mean, thank God I got my mother. Then I come home one day and my mother, like, you know, she gets all fucked up. Winds up keeling over too. So I, I didn't even have her at that point. Like raising a child is not easy by yourself, but I did it. And I would do it again and again and again if I had a child. And I get a little upset at some of these guys out here. I don't want to blow up one of their names, but, you know, not too long ago, his girl was blowing up his phone and shit. He has a baby phone. This bitch just that. Yo, I got that kid a teddy bear last year, man. This is after his birthday, and now the birthday's coming around. I'm like, dude, like, what the fuck? Like, dude, that's what you're supposed to do. Like, a teddy bear last year? Like, I, I, I honestly been dodging the guy ever since he said that. Like, I could truthfully say that person, he don't know it yet. I don't think he watches me on here, but yeah, I'm like, I don't want to be associated with someone like that. You know, just like I don't want to be associated with someone that tells on people. You know, if I find out someone's telling on someone, I just disassociate myself. You know, that's a caliber of human being I wish not to be associated with. You know? 
uh, I just, I can't see it any other way. And I think maybe me being in that mode and raising a child and, and, and all that, it's come to an end, you know, like he don't need me like that no more. The kid's my, fucking my height, man. <laughs> like for real, he's like my height with his Afro, you know, his mother who's from Jamaica, but with his Afro, he's actually like an inch or two taller than me. Yeah. Big dude. I, he don't like getting videoed and shit like that. But one day I'm going to sneak. I mean, I took some sneak pictures of him, but I don't want to be disrespectful like that. If he says no, it's no, you know. But yeah, you guys should check out his page on uh, Bobby Dyer. I think I did a good job with him, but maybe I'm. I, maybe that's what it is. I don't know why I'm coming on here fucking with you guys about this shit. And normally I come on here talking about graffiti, but someone did mention that to me last week about retirement and this and that. And then this guy dies that I know retired eight years ago. He literally had eight years. And, you know, I'm starting to think that, you know, it doesn't matter, man. I know people that died fucking John John. He's like 17 years old, man. JJ, yeah. You know, people just, time is up. Your time is up, you know. You got to enjoy yourself while you're here. I mean, that's what it boils down to. But I'm starting to really think I want to get the fuck out of New York, man. And I think I'm definitely going to retire. Like, my job right now is moving up to Harlem Hospital. It's currently down near Bellevue. But it's moving up to the to the um, Harlem Hospital, in like 2026. So I think when it moves up there, I ain't gonna move up there with it. You know, like there's no reason for it. You know, it's like what another two, three years from now. Like why bother? It's like for one of the, you know, like I said, it's not like I'm gonna get any extra real big money from my pension or nothing. What I'd like to do is I'm thinking, I'm just spitballing shit here. Is I'd like to do something that I'm interested in. Uh, I like graffiti. I don't want to do the whole gallery thing. I don't want to do that. I don't want to sell my shit on eBay. Um, I also don't want to be like some art historian, like a graffiti historian guy. Like, I don't know where I fit in the niche. But obviously, graffiti has been such a big part of my life. That it, I definitely want to continue on with it. I, I could continue writing graffiti if I wanted, just to write it differently. But I don't know. That shit's kind of boring now. Like, I don't agree with the guys that are out there now, man. I think I could rip all through all them motherfuckers. I think I could shut that shit down real quick. I think y'all a bunch of little simps, man. I think y'all fucking with that soy milk. Mm. But I'll tell you one thing. That shit where they're hanging off the buildings with those fucking um, like window washing equipment or fucking mountain climbing shit, whatever the hell. That's cool, man. That's some shit we didn't think of. <laughs> My generation didn't think of that shit, man. That's wild, man. That's the next level shit, man. I'm starting to see that more and more and more. That's crazy. I like that, man. The dudes that are doing that, those are the dudes that are king right now, man. In my mind, I, that takes away, like, each one of them has got to be a couple of thousand tags. Or each one of them has got to be a couple of hundred fillings. Like, if you want to, like, put that shit, what is it, Notice? Or Rams, MSK, uh, shit like that. You want to put that on a scale, you would literally have to put it, like, what, 500 fillings is equal to one of those things? Not even, man. You want to weigh that shit? I don't even think you can weigh that shit, man. That takes the cake, man. Those dudes are the dudes, man. Yeah, those dudes are top dogs right now, man. The motherfuckers going down the sides of them buildings. Let me answer some questions here, man. I'm going down memory lane here. All right, this is Deep Street Kid Life. Died around 2018. Yeah. All right. Uh, Cat Talks in 2002. Uh, we we still around, you know. Damn, that's some crazy story. Respect from Finland. Write a book. Ah, I don't write no book, man. It sounds like it's time to have another kid, LOL. I'll tell you, man. That's <clears throat> another thing a lot of you guys making fun of my bald spot. I was painting that shit. Let me tell you, man. Hey, girls out there, man, they got fucking daddy issues, man. <laughs> Well, yeah, don't sleep on me, man. I, I, I do all right for myself out there, man. Believe that. All right, where are we at now? Um, 
right. Sounds like time to have it. All right, there we are. All right, Dan S with the happy face. All right, howdy, Michael Rabbit. That's why we all should retire as soon as we have the means. We don't know how much time we got left. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm sorry to take you guys down a deep path, but you, one of you guys asked me this shit last week. And, yeah, I've been pondering on that shit, man. And, yo, thank you for that, man. Like, like, that's like a reality check. Like, yo, Robert, what the fuck are you going to do with the rest of your life? Your son has grown up. He don't need you around like that no more. You know, like, yeah, what are you going to do? Like, And it, the, in the Bible, it says, like, you know, God does not extend your days beyond your purpose. Like, I got to get a fucking purpose quick. <laughs> God going to be like, yo, you be a lazy motherfucker. Zap. <laughs> and I'll be done, yo. Yeah. Okay. Shit's wild, man. Yeah. I got to think of something. I, I Honestly, I didn't plan this far ahead, man. It was a little. <laughs> Come on. You sit back and you talk to RD, the dude sitting on the fucking bench. <laughs> Smoke a <of> weed. <laughs> yo, he'd be like, yo, fuck you, man. Fuck out my face, yo, man. <laughs> And you can't see me. Yeah, I'll be on some shit, man. You come up to like a 16, 17 year old me, I'll cut you up. <laughs> Crazy world, man. Crazy shit. But yeah, I'm just being truthful, man. If any of you guys are experiencing that shit, let me know. Yeah, definitely try and retire as soon as you can. But you see, that's it too the means. Like, I fucked my head up with that too. Like, what is the means? Like, how much do I need? Like, you got Murphy's Law. You know, you got Murphy's Law. What can go wrong will go wrong. You know, I got so-and-so saved, right? The minute you retire, all of a sudden, you're fucking getting a car accident or some shit like that. Guy don't got insurance. He runs you over on your fucking bicycle. It takes off or some shit. Fucking, you're quadriplegic, bro. You're fucking breathing through the tube and moving around. You're like that fucking rich guy in the wheelchair. What is it? Zuckerberg or something? Mark Zuckerberg, the guy in the wheelchair? Yeah, he's always on the game, the Big Bang Theory. And New York is very expensive there, uh, Michael Ribbick. Ace of one, yo, what's up, Ace? Uh, you should get out while you can and drop 60 grand on a nice old house in 90 minutes upstate with nature. You see, that's a good idea. Go up and move next to Cope, too, right? Be like, yo, what up, neighbor? Howdy, neighbor. Nah, nah. But I, I do have people that it's up further that could probably help me out with real estate shit, like that knows areas and stuff like that, like Schenectady and shit like that, you know. But um, I don't know. I got property down in Jamaica in the West Indies. Like, I could go down there, man. Yeah, but, uh, you know, like I just rest my bones in the sun, man. Just bleach my bones and just disappear. Fuck it, right? Chill out, you know. Of course, I come into the city every so often. Have my kid come down to Jamaica or something. I could do that very easily. Fuck a visa, man. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. That's an idea, too, but I don't know, man. I'm thinking about some real, like, See, I can't even think where I'd want to live. You know what? I should do travel. That's what I got to do. I mean, in reality, I've been to what? Jamaica, the West Indies. Been all through there. Living down there. Uh, Mexico. I was down in Mexico for a month or two. Yeah, I was hanging out down there all through Tijuana, Mexico City, DF. Um, Guyana, South America. Down there for a couple months, too, when I got married. And Burbies and shit like that. Other than that, man, I've been nowhere. Philadelphia. Went to Florida for a weekend once. Mm. I don't even know what's out there. A Long Island. I'm definitely interested, Link, you know. You see, you know what it is, too? I'm not unhappy. Don't get me wrong. If I was unhappy, I'd be thinking more ways out, you know, or, yo, I got to get out of here. I have, I still have fun. So that's a good thing. And I believe my whole, yo, fuck that, I ain't going nowhere bullshit in my head. Uh, you know, that keeps me here. But I don't know. Like, I'm not, like, uh, been uh, picked on or anything like that. <laughs> well, I got to leave or something. I think they're chasing me out of town or not. 
I just, I don't know, man. I, I think the city, you always hear this too. The city's for the young, you know, this shit ain't for the old people, man. Ain't for the kind of heart, you know. I'm getting too soft out there, man. These youngins are gonna run me over, man. I come on here talking shit. One of you guys are gonna fucking shoot me in the head one day. And come up to me with that trap music. Blah! <laughs> <laughs> Crazy motherfuckers. Hell yeah. Born in New York and I'll die in New Yorker. Row, row, G. <laughs> I hear you. All right, Jack off. Skip my name. Yeah, here we go with this shit again. All right, Jack off. Sounds like it's time to have another kid. L O L. Jack off. I said that. I did say that comment. You know, I, I said that. I read that out and I moved on. And then I said, Dan S., happy face. And I went like that. And then I went right on to the next question. Come on. Stop fucking with me, man. All right, Dan Corona, he got rid of his question. DN, crazy. Dan S., do you think that you may have survivor guilt from Jamaica? No, because survivor guilt is more like with someone that puts their life on the line more often because they feel guilty to be outliving someone else that they cared about or loved about, or they felt somehow they were able to stop the person from dying. Like they felt like they could have somehow intervened and they would feel guilty for that. And that would cause them to have guilt. No, it's not that. Although it was probably my fault when all said and done that it went down. All right, yo, what's up, RD? All right, Dan, as grief is natural, natural, exactly. I kind of have this kind of a pill for everything in the country. Ain't that the truth? Yeah, do a documentary. That's what's going on right now. I got a documentary going on. That's what I was just talking about at the beginning of this thing about Big RD Blockbuster. Like in the first two weeks of July, I was out writing graffiti. So there's documentary. I did a big blockbuster downtown in this, like near this park. The Lower East Side. I mean big. Big. Like 50 feet long, maybe. Uh, I was doing a bunch of other shit. And, yeah, I got a documentary. I sit down. I talk. And... All right. Do a documentary. All right. So, can talk. Catatoxic 202. You pretty much is a historian at this point. Yeah. But I'm just a historian for me. Like, I'm not trying to, like, I, I'm like, yo, and even if someone I didn't get along with, if they were out there like that, I give them their props. I hold no regret towards anyone out there. I know, you know, it doesn't bother me anything. Like, I, I don't, I believe I'm not judgmental like it, uh, everyone else is. Every other person you see, if you look at them books and all these things that come out and, Hell, you leave even look at Style Wars, the movie. That guy, the photographer guy, he met one guy. And what did that one guy do? He showed him his friend and his other friend showed him the other friends. And before you know it, all the friends that were through connections got in that movie. You know? So, yeah, it's like there's hardly anything like from out further. A lot of like Brooklyn shit like that got cut out and stuff like that. Joe and Sonic, I, I saw an interview, and I'm up 100% with them, man. I'm motherfuckers are tearing shit up, man. Sonic, Joe, nuts. Yeah. Good shit. Should have been in that movie more. Hell, T-Kid should have been in that fucking movie. All right. Where we at him? I love these big vertical blockbusters. All right, that's from Danker Owner. ZT, I pretty much a historian. That's where I was. All right, ZT, yo. You see now that, like, that jack-off guy, like, I missed his comment or something. Now I'm, like, going through each and every comment and shit, like, making sure. Shit, Spider-Man shit, those are vertical. All right, now this is a pause or something. All right, now... 
Chris Gormley, Sup RD, Aloha from Hawaii. What's your uh, subway uh, surfing ever try? Yeah, I subway surfed. I've also surfed on the buses, on the tops of the buses. And there's a picture floating around with me and Mike 173 on the top of a bus. Someone was in um, St. Catharines Park, 68th Street Park near Julia Richmond High School. And they took the picture. I forget who it was. And you, it's, it's a good shirt. It's a good picture. I got like a Miami Vice t-shirt on. It was actually like this color too. In terms of the retirement, you should go all over India or Indonesia or some shit. Bring a film and camera. Yeah, but I don't want to go write graffiti in, in other places. Like I think that's kind of stupid in my mind. I don't know. I just stick with New York. Have you ever met V.E. from Brooklyn? No, I never met him. I didn't even know he's from Brooklyn. I thought he was from Queens. Uh, have you ever been to the Rocky Mountains? I think so. Is that near Bear Mountain? Because I went up and rode a tag on Bear Mountain with Frankie Gator, SQ. We were on a KZ-1000 motorcycle. We had one joint on us. And there was like 10 people sitting in the park in John Jay Park. So I hopped on the back of his motorcycle, and boom, went all the way, <laughs> fucking bam out. I caught a tag on that shit, smoked a joint. We rode all the way back down. <laughs> uh, have you ever met VE from Brooklyn? No, we did that. Harv Kemp, what's up, RD? Not much, chilling. All right, ZT, it would be cool to see you lean into the graffiti history shit. It's getting more and more important as people with knowledge from that era pass away. Yeah, like I could do this whole historian thing, but I don't know. I um, I don't know. I'll leave that up to Ket and them. I, I don't want to be known for that. I'm just coming on here goofing around with you guys, having a good time, you know, letting you know how it was. As far as it goes, I don't feel as if, like, it's anyone's responsibility to teach anyone anything about graffiti. No one really taught me. I just paid attention, you know. <laughs> like, where was our older generation? The older generation from me, they hated the newer guys that were coming out writing graffiti. They looked at us like, we're going to fuck shit up, you know. Anything, they'll beat you up. They catch you in the tunnel or something like that. Like I said, I used to be scared. I'd be under the bridge and shit. Fucking, I'd be by myself. And like, I'd see all these guys from TNS walking by and shit. <laughs> I'd be like scared. I'd be hiding under there and shit. Like, you know, let them go by and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like a little kid. Those guys like four or five years older than me. All right, uh, ZT, could you see lean into the graffiti history shit? We did that. I, Deline Betanze, whatever. I'm sorry I butchered your name. I, can you talk about how your life stress ball fire hydrant came about? I have two of them. I don't know. I have no idea. As a matter of fact, we were in the building in jest. TVT. It's like, yo, and I got these fire hydrant things too. We could put your tag on them. Little fire hydrant stress balls. We could put your tag on those. I think people will love them. And I said, yeah, sure, why not? That's how it came about. <laughs> I, we was, V was from Glendale. All right, Michael Ribbit, Queens. Yeah, that's what I thought. And I don't even know about all that shit. <clears throat> I just remember Kez Five telling me, I rust -Oleum, uh, the Rockies are in Western Canada and goes down into Washington. I believe if you ever have the chance to round trip through there, you should. It's beautiful. Yeah, and another thing, I don't even know how to drive. I mean, I drove a Fiera once. I smashed it. almost went in the fucking river, in the East River near the heliport. Uh, it was a stolen Fiero, F-E-R-O, one of the little things. It looks like a slice of pizza, a stick shift. I never drove a car in my life. Never, ever, ever. Like that Fiero I drove. I mean, I live in the heart of Manhattan, for Christ's sake. Now, motorcycles, I'm good on. A motorcycle, I can fucking bust a nut on that shit for a couple of blocks. Yeah, motorcycle, no junk. Never been drove a car. 
But the Rockies, that would be good. Get like a big old mobile home and shit. Drive around. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, the Rockies. But Canada, I hear some wild shit up there, right? What the hell's angels are going at it with the, with the mafia, right? They're fucking blowing each other away left and right, right? After that Cooley guy got killed. I remember they used to have them guys up there, the the rock machine, right? Yeah. Dan S. But those Hell's Angels, for real, man, it looks like they're trying to take that shit over up there, man. They're going to wipe out all of that shit. Then they're going to start picking into Manhattan, you know, into uh, USA. But you think about it, who's up there? Was that to, to do? To, to, Trudeau guy? Yeah, they running all through his ass, man. Psh, them boys don't stand a chance. Fuck with the shit that's going on up there, man. God damn. Y'all are lighting this shit up. You guys are stealing our fucking shine up there in Canada, man. Motherfuckers are stealing our shine. Nothing to be proud of, but yo, for real, right? Motherfuckers are taking it back. Yeah. Every fucking day you hear about some crazy shit going on up there. It's great to read about it. You know, I love it. Wouldn't want to be living down the street from the shit. <laughs> I learned graffiti. All right, this is from Dan S. I learned graffiti from watching. However, I met a few writers who were brought into it. Yeah, like me. I mean, I might have had a little edge up because my brother was hanging out with Lace. And my brother used to write Sean on the sixes. He used to do the SDs. Like the SD tag that is in the, um, the Dondi book. When they show the insides, it says Dondi, and it's got a Joey, uh, YCM, Yolk City Mob, and it's got an SD tag. The SD's my brother in the Dondi White book that Zephyr put out. That was my brother that did that. And he also wrote Super, Soup, Super Sean. I don't know where I was going with that. Let me go back to this. Rockies, blah, blah, blah. I learned graffiti. So anyway, he was down with Lace. They met in LaSalle Academy. They were in high school together, and then my brother got locked up, and I started hanging out with Lace, and that's when I started writing graffiti. Lace got me into it, and then I started beating, bumping into like D3 and JJ and all them guys from up in John J. Park and shit like that. Uh, yeah, all those dudes started meeting all them guys, and they were already writing before me. Like D3 was actually writing graffiti before me. Yeah. Uh, so was JJ. A uh, bunch of them people were hanging out up there. That's Jimbo was up there. Uh, Caesar, Alpo, a bunch of fucking people, man. Redhead Joey, Sammy Yao, the Flying Hawaiian, Eddie Bannock, the Mavroidis, Joey Mavroidis, Kevin Mavroidis, Michael Mavroidis, Chucky Mavroidis, uh, John Zavolis, which is John John, his brother, Michael Zavolis, Kelly Zavolis. Yeah, Greeks, a bunch of Greeks, a lot of Irish and Greeks, black, Spanish, yeah. Ralph, yeah, a bunch of us, man. That's when I started bumping in them dudes. That's when, like, I was normally just robbing and stealing with my brother, and I was downtown more, like, in the 60s. 62nd Street is where I lived. You had, like, 60th Street, 61st Street. You had Chris Camuso. You had the Brown Brothers over there. They're younger than me. I used to hang out with Chris Camuso early on in life. Uh, I would be around there robbing and stealing from uh, construction sites. That's when you had Ernie Grillo. You guys ever hear of Ernie Grillo? That's Neil Del Croach, the John Gotti's mentor. The guy that kind of John Gotti respected and uh, mentored after or whatever. I don't know. I'm not Italian. But yeah, that guy's daughter married fucking Ernie Grillo. Yeah. He was probably about 30 something years old in that neighborhood when I was like 15, 16. He had a couple brothers and stuff like that, too. But yeah. A lot of shit was going on down there. I was right across the street from the Vegabondo. The Italian restaurant, Vegabondo. I used to see the chin. He would be coming in and out of there. Bunch of people. 
Uh, what's your favorite piece that's still up and where can I see it? A piece I did? I don't know. Um, ain't nothing really running no more. I mean, you still got shit in tunnels, uh, blockbusters and shit like that that I've done. They're still running. Like 14th Street. I mean, you take the 6th train going uptown from 14th Street to 23rd Street. Look out the window. That's a pretty nice one there. The 2 and the 5 coming out. The 6 coming out up in the Bronx where the 2 and the 5 train comes out up in the Bronx. I still got that. I believe so. So I don't think anyone went over it. I know someone fucked my D up a little bit. You know, someone did like a little fill in after my D or something. And they chopped my D a little bit. Other than that, it should still be there. If not, fuck. I got one on the sixes and the D underground, the A underground. Um, matter of fact, MQ just sent me a pretty cool picture of that one underground. It's like some idiot. I don't know. It looked like a little kid wrote in it, but that shit's underground, underground. Like that's the D. Under from 59th Street, it goes all the way up to 125th Street. The D train, the express D train. So that's under the A and the CC. Under that is where you got the D. And it goes all the way up like a mile, two miles straight without stopping. It picks up some speed. People are like, how the fuck you get it? And now someone like some little kid or something. I don't know. It doesn't, it's not graffiti. It's like someone drew like a little flower or something over me or something. MQ sent me the picture. I'm like, the fuck, I'm like, oh, the fuck is that shit they drew over me? Like, oh. And they candy striped me too. They put the stripes over it. So the car, you know, the train, the reflective stripes, the red and white. We call them candy stripes. Some people call them blood and bones. But here in, where I'm from, we call that shit candy stripes. Like, no clearance. There's nowhere to hide in the tunnel. So, yeah, they candy stripe that shit. But it's still there. Uh, I'll post it if the picture. I have it. I, it's actually, if you ever look at the Alice in Wonderland video I did where I'm like the bad rabbit and I'm chasing around Alice in the train tunnel, that's the RD I go, but I run past in that. It's a movie, like a documentary underground or something. Anna is the Alice in Wonderland and I'm the, the rabbit. I jump around the train tunnel and shit. She's dressed like Alice. Yeah, we had fun. All right, um, but yeah, I think that would be cool to see if you're interested in looking at something. Look out the D train window. Um, look west going uptown on the D train. Uh, from 59 to 125th. Also, it's pretty cool. Vice versa on the east side, on the sixth one, I mean on the four and the five, underground, from 125th Street to 59th Street. I did 300 and something tags, like RD Lace, RD Lace, RD Lace, the whole fucking way. Just tags, RD Lace, 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 RD Lace. It's like 300 and something RDs. I counted them. The the train was going by slow. We were trying to count them when we were doing it, but then we wound up talking to each other and we started fucking with each other too. It's like 302. <laughs> like, no, no, no. You know, like uh, he'd be counting a number and then I'd be like six, four, four, four. <laughs> I'd be like, yo, stop, man. You fuck my count up. I'm like, let's start over. You know, yeah, we were joking around, you know, on the express tracks, me and Lace going down. But we did try and keep count. Definitely over 300 things in a row, one after the other. They're practically kissing each other. If anything, maybe a couple of inches space between them. And like a straight miles. Like a mile, yeah. Uh, so that covers that. Hey, R.D., any crazy stories about the one hard? Hard one, T.W.B.? I heard he passed away. Washington brought uh, the Washington boys, Washington Projects. Uh, yard up in Riverdale. No, the ghost yard, no. All right. Uh, uh, New York, Vulgarian. I'm born and raised in Kingsbridge and remember seeing your writing on the one line years ago when I was a kid. I was living up in Kingsbridge. I was at 2787 Marion Avenue. That's right between like 197, which turns around and goes down to Decatur. Yeah, and Webster's behind that. I lived up there for eight years. 
I was living up there, right, in uh, 2787. It's a house that my uh, wife's family owned. And I was living in that house when I got married. Yeah, I, yeah, I was living in that house a couple of years, about seven years or something I lived there. A lot of good writers from that neighborhood, man. All right, Mars, R.D., talk about box truck bumpers. Yeah, give me a couple of years on that one, man. Statue of limitations. All right, Jonathan Freeloader. Yo, R.D., can you talk about the first time tripping on acid? I don't even remember. I, I've taken acid. I've taken acid quite often. Took in the blotters to, when Jerry Garcia was around. They had the ones that were all tie dyed. I took those. I took the Holly Leafs, the Bart Simpsons. Those were good, the Bart Simpsons. I've taken a lot of acid in my life. I can't remember the first time taking it. I remember the first time taking mescaline. I was on a rowboat in Miller's Pond in Long Island at about three in the morning with my brother. I probably took acid with my brother too for the first time. If not, uh, probably meth and D3 or one of them guys. All right. Did you ever paint highways? Yes. I'm known pretty much the king of the FDR Drive highway. If you sit back and think, I've had that highway better than anyone ever, ever had it a day in their life. I had it. And longer than anyone's ever had it. So, yes, you can count me in on highways. I used to do huge blockbusters on the highways. Uh, big, big, bigger than most of these fucking people do, man. Believe me. Big shit, man. I'd be like with these cheap silvers, man. I wouldn't even use a fat cap on that shit. I'd be on there like 10, 12 fucking silvers, man. <laughs> Fill that shit in. Yeah. On John J. Park Wall, you could actually still see the stain. I mean, they sandblasted it, but you could actually still see it. Like, if I'm standing there, I can picture it perfectly. The R, and then it kind of gets dark again where the wall really is, and then they blasted the D, and I can actually see it. Like, it's almost like they shaped it, except for the line that goes like this on my R. It's like the V piece is gone, but it's almost like, yeah. Well, yeah, I was actually known for the highways way before most of these people were fucking with highways. I talk about box trucks, trying tripping on acid. Did you ever paint on highways? I right, Patrick Enemy. Uh, with each one, teach one mentality in the graph scene. Did you ever teach one? Yeah, watch my videos about me being in the Hall of Fame. I'm always teaching people. I'm fucking teaching you right now, no? All right, between rounds TV, I lived in 2718 Marion Avenue. There was a kid that RD in that community, row 138. That's wild, man. Yeah, I lived, I was up between like 197, 198. And then you had the, um, like that nun built, like that big thing where, where all the nuns would be, uh, Marymount or something like that. Carmel, Marymount, Carmel. Yeah, that's I used to know like Safin and them was over there. Uh, yeah, a few people. But yeah, I, I was living in that building there. I used to walk my dog and shit. Yeah. I used to hang out with Tracy a lot at that point in my life too. Him and his dude, Raymond, that lived around the block too. He was a savage nomad or something. And then later on, man, them dudes they didn't pop up for a while, but this dude, he was still wearing his jacket in the nineties. Raymond. I think he went by the name Blade. I remember his boa constrictor was sick. I was like, yo, you need to put a heat pad on there, man. It's the winter. And I started eating again. I helped him out. All right. That story about how you went through the front door at noon had me rolling in tears. All right. All right. When you used to go through the front door at East 180 Street, did you ever run into Cap, the MPC? No, not Cap, but like Rook and them. I've talked about that. Rook, Rush Hour, Risk, stuff like uh, Wrist. All 
All right, bone tips. So, I mean, I know Cap now. I met him after that, but. All right, New York, but I didn't meet him in there. All right, bust through the front fucking door, balls out, great line. Yeah, all right. Uh, when I always saw Tracy in my neighborhood, Jesse's Tavern place on Broadway it was sick to bed. They demolished it. Uh, it's a Bulgarian. Uh, eight, nine, seven, nine, seven. Speak of statute of limitations. Can those writers that have stuff from the 70s, 80s, you know, that's a funny thing. Like, you're at, well, all right, let me start from the beginning. 9797, nine, speaking of statute of limitations, those writers that have stuff from the 70s and 80s in the tunnels get in trouble for that still? I would say no. But let me tell you a little story. When they locked me and came here fucking with me and put me through the system, they were showing me tags that were like fire hydrants. Like, they don't buff them fucking things. So, like, they were, like, 15 years old, some of them, 12 years old, some of them tags. Lampposts, too. Like, the, the green poles on side streets, like, they had me on, like, 187 cases. Then they dropped it down to 98 cases. It was a six-month investigation going on. And they slapped every fucking RD they could on me. And I thought the same thing. <clears throat> I told my judge, you know, the lawyer that I had, and then the prosecutor, as I was denying the whole shit, you know, but they say it's a pond. No, the, the, the officer said it's a pond discovery. So I could write on something 10 years ago and they could discover it and then come and lock me up for it again. You know, like they got me for RD, you know, like I was found guilty of it. I've, um, had to pay him 500 and something dollars. But I, the whole time, I'm like, no, 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 it wasn't me, it wasn't me. I mean, even in the precinct, when they're showing me pictures of me, like video footage on a big TV screen. I'm like, that's not me, man. <laughs> it's right in front of the Subway Inn diner, <clears throat> uh, the bar over there. And it's on a fire engine. I actually look up at the camera like, psst, like psst, fuck that. I did the tag. <laughs> I'm like, that's not me. It's like, yo, that's your dog, right? I'm like, no. Oh, that's not my dog. My dog. <laughs> so, yo, they zoomed in on my dog. And yo, they went tweak, tweak, tweak. Yo, you can see my dog's license on his fucking neck. I mean, yo, come on, man. That's Photoshop. You know, then I was like saying to myself, yo, Rob, just shut up. Wait for a lawyer, man. <laughs> you know, when you're curious, you want to see what they got. I didn't give a fuck. I mean, once I knew it was about graffiti, I'm like, yeah, you know, but I was like, oh, no, no, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me. You know, every time I went to court, no, 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 you know. And then that, like, final offer, that, that's like what you want to hear. Like those two words, final offer, because you're not going to get any better than that, you know. So they said, you know, $550 restitution, final offer. I'm like, all right, all right, I did it, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to explain to them how you did it. That's why if you look at that picture that was in the newspaper, I'm like smiling and my eyes are up because you have to tell them how you did it. Like you have to explain how you execute the crime. So I'm like, well, I walked up to it. I looked around. I was like, do I have to explain it 187 times? <laughs> Yeah, the judge, you know, everyone's like, oh, this dude's a fucking clown. And I was like, well, okay. I was, I was like, okay. I walked up. I looked up and down the block. Make sure no one was around. So I went down, wrote on one side. And I'm like doing the tag and everything. So I popped my head back up. I looked around. No one's around. I wrote the other side. I get the other side. Only the judge is like, okay, enough. <laughs> I had to give $550. You know, yeah, that shit was funny, man. <laughs> Look at that. Well, let's see where we were here. All right, you guys. All right, here we are. I'm born and raised. That's from New York, Volga. All right, Mars RD, talk about box truck bumpers. I told you, blah, 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 blah. All right, yo, RD, can you talk about the first time tripping on acid? We did all that shit already. Patron with the each one, teach one. We fucking did that crap again. Fucking teaching people shit. I ain't going to teach y'all nothing. I'm going to go to my grave with my secrets. 
all of them. Uh, uh, yeah, between rounds, TV. Wow. Uh, yeah, he used to live right over there, near me. Uh, New York, Bulgaria. When you used to go through the front door at 180, we did all that shit. Dan S. Bone Phil. Bone tip fills take forever. Yeah, sure do. But back in the 80s, it didn't matter, man. Like, that's what I was doing, that shit, like 89. Like on the highway, they don't bother with that shit. Uh, uh, always used to see Tracy Broadway. Yeah, we did that. Uh, speaking of, that's another thing. Like Tracy passed away. I was kind of like, yo, right? I mean, a lot of people passed away in my life, but, you know, a couple of them really stick out every so often, you know? Like he was kind of like an important figure in the graffiti world. I mean, not, yeah, I guess that's the best way to put it. All right, Barzalita, do you know Charlie from the Bronx hung out with Jimmy Ha Ha? I don't know if it's the same Charlie, but I might have. Yeah, Jimmy Ha Ha. All right, this one of the best lives, real. All right, what was, um, I'm trying to think fucking, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy Ha Ha and Charlie. He used to hang out with that dude Raymond that I was talking about. Is that why you're mentioning that? Raymond uh, the, was uh, like a motorcycle guy without a motorcycle. Uh, Jimmy Ha Ha was the tag. That got me started, Dole CAC. Oh, yeah, Jimmy Haha, -ha, right? You could, yeah, you would just say you lived up around there, too. You know who was up a lot, too? Like, there was a kind of, yeah, but that was more, well, that's definitely Queens. What was it? Um, Johnny B and Krizzy. Uh, uh, Anthony Table, what's up, Tabe? How's it going? TFT in the house. Yeah, I walked over that bridge right into the yard, and we hit the disabled work train. And yeah, that's what I, you saw my interview. I did. I was like, "Yo, I go up in that yard up there, 180th Street. I walk right in that motherfucker. I said, I walk in that shit. I walk right in the front fucking door." Because that's how I did it. There's actually a picture of me on the bridge going right into the fucking place. I'm like this. And I, I got all black on. I got a black leather coat. I got black pants on. <laughs> I, I got the ink, the marsh ink stuck down my pants and shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's a classic picture, man. I, I, I did an episode on here. It's 180 Street. It's called Morris Park Yard. I think that's the name of my episode. You get a kick out of that shit. Hell yeah. I was like, yo, fuck that. Back in the day, when I was a teenager, I was like a fucking boomer. I was like a Jaguar. They couldn't fuck with me. But it's true. I'd walk around, but I was doing insides. I mean, I remember once doing outsides in the broad daylight, doing it the same way. And my wife, she waited. She wasn't my wife at the time. She was my, you met her, right? Up uh, when you were in the stationery store. But um, yeah, she would go, she'd sit on the platform and wait for me. I'd go up there, boom, boom, bash. I did like a Deb, D E B. And I went back. Yeah, I'd walk right in the motherfucker. People think, oh, my God. But, yeah, a couple of people do that. Tavis said he do it. Hell, yeah, walk right in that bitch. Tavis, TFT. Yeah. I remember Cash, TFT, Cash, Coco, 106. Yeah. Blake. That was a good friend of mine. I used to hit the Sixers with him, too. And React. I saw React. He's catching tags now up in Harlem. React. He's right. React. 357. I haven't heard from that in a while. He used to have the sixes real good. He had the six train smashed. React. I forget who he was going with. But I remember React. I think he was with RA. Right? React. But he was down with us. He was writing 357 now. Yeah. Up in Harlem right now. I, I, uh, someone just posted pictures of uh, React, R-E-A-C-T, 357. TFA, that's what he would down. React, TFA. Yeah. 
React TFA and React 357, the same React. Yeah, that shit was wide open. That gate door, Tabor, hell yeah, wide open. I walked right in that bitch. <clears throat> I bumped into other writers, too. Like I said, Rook, you know, Rook MPC, he's the one who taught me how to do that bubble letter I do in that place. I never did outsides before that. I was always doing insides. I mean, Lace would fuck around, you know, this, that, blah, 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 blah. And I'd sit there watching him or something like that. You know, Lace was doing pieces before I was even writing graffiti. Lace was out there. <clears throat> and I'd hang out with him and watch him and shit. I'd just run through the insides or something like that. But yeah, Rook is the one that actually showed me that. And he told me how to get it because he did the R's, you know, R-O-O-K. And remember he would do R-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-
I was also living up there with Joey TDS. You know, I was up there in the Bronx too. And then the Bronx Zoo train station. I was living up there with Joey for about it. You know, when my child was born, my mother died. I was living up there with Joey, man. He would take me in. He had me sitting there, man. Yeah, I lived with Joey. And he helped me, man. He was like a father to my kid, man. Joey TDS, man. For real. Him and Mo, yeah. And that's when I would see a lot also with Penn. I used to hit the dumpster lots up there, too. Uh, 180th Street, Little Lebanon, under the 2 and the 5, West Farmer's Market. I was smashing Ezo and the Revolt piece I crossed out there. Zephyr I crossed out there. Uh, yeah, I used to cross that shit out. Fuck them. Uh, that's when he did the dinosaur, right? Dinosaur. I'm a dinosaur, Zephyr, the dinosaur. So I have, fuck you, dinosaur, my dick. <laughs> I crossed that shit out. It's funny, yeah. And then D3 crossed that shit out, too. I forget how he got up there. Oh, yeah, because he was fucking with Ezo. Yeah, because Ezo was taking over the Hall of Fame. He was, uh, Joey TDS was no longer doing the Hall of Fame. Ezo, like, swindled in there, acting all polite and shit, trying to change the rules. So I was like, nah, fuck that, man. I'm going to take that dude down. <laughs> so, yo, he took his ass down, man. He gave up the Hall of Fame. He gave that shit back to Joey. That's a true story. He might say he moved on and he picked up his art career and he moved on. Fuck out of here, man. Me and D3, 357, chased that motherfucker out of the Hall of Fame. Yeah, we chased that motherfucker out of there. He ain't come back. Fuck out of here with that shit. Take that shit back out to Queens, man. Yeah. True fucking story. Came up in the Hall of Fame trying to take over and shit, talking all sweet with the custodian and shit. I'm like, all right, motherfucker. <laughs> you might be able to have your shit in the Hall of Fame, but I'm like, yo, the sun will never rise and set on that shit. I live not far from here. That shit will be like the St. Patrick's Day fucking parade, yo. <laughs> For real. We'll be up in here all night. Every time something gets done, it's going to get dissed. Every time something gets done, it's going to get dissed. I said, not only that, we started smashing peak and him shit. Not really me with Peak. In D3, I kind of stayed away from Peak, too. But, yeah, we took Ezo out, man. I actually stopped. Once he walked away from the Hall of Fame, once Ezo said, okay, Joey, hey, you got it. And what it all started was he was like, no, Lace 357 can't do a piece in there. He wasn't letting Wayne COD do a piece in there. And he wasn't letting Purr do a piece in there. So me, I instigated, like, yo, fuck that shit. I would do that, blah, 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 blah. It's all in my first video that I've ever dropped on here. But yeah, he tried to take over that shit. I was like, yo, fuck that shit. <laughs> I'm going to get him. Yeah. And we took that shit out. I, I kept crossing him out. And then once he's like, yo, all right, I get it. You're know, like, his shit ain't going to live. It ain't going to live out here. Hell no. And we were taking that shit out as fast as he could do it. He couldn't hang with that shit. We wiped him out. Oh, yeah. And he gave up. He's like, yo, fuck it. Joey, you could have the Hall of Fame back. So I'm like, all right, man, you know, this, that, and cool. I, I, they go, I told D3 and everyone, you know, 357, they go, man, psh, it's all good. And uh, Sammy crossed him out. Sammy crossed him out still today. <laughs> yeah, a couple months ago, Sammy got him on 57th Street. <laughs> Dead fucking serious, yo. Fuck, yeah. Yo, I want to ask why. So next time D3 come on, man, he was supposed to come by today. But yeah, D3, next time he come on, he crossed that dude out just a couple months ago. Yeah, over there on fucking 57 and like 8th and 9th Avenue. Like 30 years later and shit, 20 years later. <laughs> and yo, Ezo came back and crossed him out. Like, yo, fuck you. Yeah, yeah for real. Like like 57th and 9th Avenue or something. Man, Sammy said, yo, that dude didn't fill it. He got that. He did, nah, nah, nah. He did his shit because he would do a pill. And yo, here's a pill to swallow. Like D3 had this thing where he would do a circle. And he would outline it, and he would do his D3 tagging it over all Ezo shit. You know, the skull and crossbones. Yeah, he was taking Ezo out, man. Kept doing it, too. I'm like, yo, man, you kind of like going against your word. That's not cool. He's like, that's your word, Rob. I ain't never said I was going to stop. Fuck that dude. <laughs> I was like, you know, in a way, you're right, but you're making me look bad. Like, I, you know, I, like, why is he bother giving up the Hall of Fame? He's like, he's giving up the Hall of Fame because he knows it's just not going to work out for him, man. And yeah, he's oh, he kind of just faded out. He went like he said, he he moved on to better things in life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you gotta love this shit, you know? Yeah, woo woo. Yeah, Rook, rest in peace. All right, where were we? Um, yeah, but he, seriously, think about that, man. As a matter of fact, it's it's a well known fact. Ezo took over that Hall of Fame for one fucking year. 
Yeah, he tried to backdoor Joey and everyone up there. Yeah, you could ask partner. They'll tell you. You could ask any of those hundreds of writers were in there. I'm like, yo, fuck that, man. I was telling Joey at one point I was going to stab him and stab him in the fucking belly. Yeah, he's like, no, nah, come on. I was like, nah, he's not going to die. But he'll, they'll take him to the hospital. When they take him to the hospital, Lace and them could do their pieces. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, fuck him, man. Because I, I, fuck him, man. That's the Hall of Fame. Like, shit like that's important to me, you know? Yeah, for real. Hey, Joey knows where to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he knows. Joey knows, man. That's my man, yo. Believe me, man. That dude, fucker, he took care of my son and me, man, like like family, yo, for real. And I'm, I treat him like family, man. Haven't spoken to him in a while, but yeah, Joey, TDS, the Death Squad. All right, well, Grand Gizmo, do you think the Scrapyard Graph Store is federal? My bad. I had to leave earlier. To, I think it was federal. I don't understand what you mean by it. scrap yard, the store. Right, do you think the scrap yard graph store? I don't know. I mean, I gave them railroad spikes. You know, I do. I had railroad spikes. I get them from the the yard. You know, when they park the freight trains, I you know I want to do a freight or something. I walk around with a bucket. I grab a bunch of these screws, like then the fucking uh, railroad spikes. I have a bunch of them laying around. And I um, do a tag on each side of them, and I would sell them. I'd give them to that guy, and he'd sell them. I think he like thirty bucks a pop or something like that for them. Uh, I don't know. I never really went back to collect money from them on it, but I don't think I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, do I think he's a cop? They got the mustache. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think he's a cop. I don't know. Nah, I don't know. Even if he is, I don't know. Fuck some man. Like, I think that would be overthinking it. Like, I don't think a cop would open up a store like that. What was that? Like, Angelo... What the fuck was it? Up at Hunts Point, man. We used to sell these motherfuckers motorcycles. Oh, man. Uh... Angelo Ruggiero Rigario. Remember, he had a scrapyard, and the cops they opened up a scrapyard next to him. I think that one was out in Brooklyn or Queens or somewhere, maybe Brooklyn Queens. And then the cops opened up like a scrap, like it was a, it was an auto theft ring that the, the guy was running. And um, the cops, they were in yeah, mafia shit. So the cops, they opened up one across the street from them. And they were like doing it for cheaper and shit. So, so all the thieves were bringing the shit to the cops and shit. Yeah. And then I don't know what happened, but like that Angelo guy, he was married to, um, no, I don't know. Not the Gotti, right? The Victoria Gotti. I don't know. But anyway, he's a, a little nutty, the guy. You know, he gets like a, he goes over to the cops. He don't know the cops. He thinks it's just a, someone weaseling in on his business, right? So he goes over there. They go, what the fuck are you doing? Open up a fucking store right across from me. And then you're doing it for cheaper than me. I'll fuck you up, this, that, and the cops. He's telling them to, right? So like, you better get the fuck out of here. You're still here. I'll fucking kill you. You're here by next week. I'm going to fucking kill you. So next week comes, they're still there. So he actually lights a fucking, like, a, he makes a mouth cocktail. Like, he takes, like, a bottle, like a wine bottle, fills it with gasoline, sticks <laughs> stick the fucking rag in it, right? He lights his shit. He throws it right out. They come out. They lock his ass up. <laughs> yeah? Is that what you tell him he's going out with that store downtown? Come on, man. You fucking with me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you killing me, man. I'm sweating over here. Let me open the window, man. Give me a fucking asthma attack, man. You good? Uh. What was it? Rigario, Rigario or something like that, right? <laughs> All right, what was Victoria Gotti's and Yeah, I think that was the his her ex, right? And we used to sell motorcycles to some of them crazy bastards, but up in Hunts Point area. Yeah, that shit on smashed a lot too. Big R D doing it up. What is that you sent me there? Uh, Altos. 
Was that a TV set? You fucking with me, bro. <laughs> fuck is that? I need a goddamn magnifying glass. It's a TV set, right? But yeah, because now that people are answered, it goes up so I can see you wrote more. So big R, uh, big R D doing it up. It's a TV set. Best program of the week. Yeah, now I can see it. Out those, <laughs> yeah, lol. But Angelo, yeah, that's Angelo. I don't know who gives a fuck, man. He do threw a fucking malt cocktail, a gasoline <laughs> at the fucking place, and they locked his ass up. I, I remember reading about that somewhere. All right. Are there more writers now or in the past? And your tag, your your little thing here is H dash one zero two G H I Q or L Q. Are there more writers in New York City now or in the past? Depends on what in the past you're talking about. I think when I first was really getting into graffiti and like 83, when I was like RD and writing graffiti, I think there was much more writers then than I've ever seen before in my life. I think nowadays, being it's more surface instead of underground, it's kind of more an eyesore. It looks, I guess, plus the utensils, the tools, the paraphernalia that you guys use to apply your graffiti is different also. It's wider, it's fatter, your graffiti is bigger. Um, you're climbing, you're fucking using like rock climbing equipment. So uh, that's definitely different. But as far as it goes with more or less, I think back during the, the train era, 83, 84 was probably the most. By 85, it started slowing down. Like all RTW and them, they kind of fell out of it. Uh, like uh, TNT, TMT, they were all done. T Kid was still going. Um, Quick kept going. Is the Wiz kept going? Is the Wiz? I was really thinking about it, and I would actually say he is the king of subways as far as it goes with getting up. I didn't like how he did his pieces, but I would say he did it the most. Uh, in DY, I remember a lot when I was young. DY a lot, but during my prime, it had faded out. Uh, in also. I remember in a lot less than I remember DY. DY I remember a lot. As a matter of fact, fucking in between the RD and the um, the lace on the two and the five that we did, we didn't go over it, but there's actually electric boxes that they built over it. There's a gesto, a gesto under that, and you can actually still kind of see it on the two and the five. And we were like, oh, we ain't fucking with that. And we had like... 20-something cans of paint. We were planning on taking the whole shit down, but we actually left that spot alone out of respect. Uh, yeah, D.Y., Jest, Jester. Yeah. All right, Red Hood Annie now. All right, uh, Gizmo, do you think it's worth it to move to the city when I'm older? I don't know. It depends on what you have planned, man. There's really nothing going on in this city. You got to be careful, you know? Depends on where you move. All right, sir, smoke a lot. RD, how's it going, bro? I'm chilling, man. Can't complain. I right, bar is elite. Where can I purchase RD artwork and shit? On my Instagram, normally I post stuff that I'm selling. And I give stuff away on my Patreon. Uh, at least three times a month, two times a month. All right. Altos Pizza, welcome back, Carla, the Jester Piece TV show. I always remember a peanut. There's a Jester in that too? Isn't it a peanut? Altos Pizza, Sir Smoker, I C H Ichabod, the rail guy, it freight trains. Yeah, Ichabod. Yeah, he's le recent Ichabod. Yeah, he's up on the, the freights a lot. Unfortunately, I don't see much of that. 
I mean, I've seen him up actually out in Queens around the freight yard. Actually, he's got a couple little blockbusters on like some zinc shit, like some buildings and shit, like around the track areas there. All right, H dash one two G H I Q. I love when stuff gets built over the pieces. Yeah, I like it too. Like you see that um. You know that bat, that big bat, Stay Ugly? On the Gramercy Theater, he did the rooftop of that shit. And they put like a big electrical box right in the middle of the bat's face. <laughs> I think it looks cool. But he did like the whole roof. That's like 23rd between 3rd and Lexington, I think. Yeah, between 3rd Avenue and Lexington. The hand building's right around the corner. School of Visual Arts is down the block. He's got a nice one. It's that bat. It looks like the bat signal from Batman. Uh, Ichabod said he started late. Yeah. Well, no, I'm just saying Ick, because there was an Ick before that. Ick, Kid Panama, used to also write Ick. He would do like these straight letter Icks. Kid Panama. A lot of people don't know that, but Kid Panama used to write Ick. But he didn't spell it I-C-H. He spelled it like Ick. Like if you have a fish tank and the bacteria inside the fish tank, the fish get a disease known as Ick. It's like a bubbly slime that gets over the fish, like an infection. And you have to put like a stress coat in the water to help heal the, the cut. Ick, I-C-K. And that's Kid Panama I used to do Ick, I-C-K. <clears throat> also, not just Kid Panama. At least around here he did it. Maybe he didn't do it anywhere else. But, yeah, he used to write Ick also, Kid Panama. But like I said, I-C-K. All right, Gizmo. Uh, I, Gizmo, next time I'm in the city, could you make something for me? I'll pay you. We want like a lasagna. Ha! <laughs> Fuck with you. Uh, I, 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 I do PayPal. I can mail stuff. Just get at me on my Instagram, on my messages. I sort of smoke a lot. I'm really not painting right now. Also, I do have stuff that I have here that I'm getting rid of, but I'm not actually physically painting. I did paint this the other day just to put on my video. And I, um, I'm i giving that to uh, someone. And um, I have a bunch of other shit that's in there, street signs. Remember I had a bag of canvases. I got rid of all of them in one shot. I let them all go for cheap you know, the guy's here. He's got a car and everything. I gave him everything. Uh, I got rid of it just to get rid of it. I don't really like canvases. I showed you guys what happened in the big one, right? I had the R on one and the D on the other with the frog and a fucking hole just from storing it. I pulled it out from where I had stored it. A big, like a four or five inch cut in it. I did it. It's on my episode. I stick my finger in the hole. and everything. So I, I like street signs. I like doing shit on metal. Or wood, like planks of wood are cool. Like I still got this thing here for uh, fucking uh, BL is sitting here. I'm going to eventually just mail it to him. I'm going to see if I get his address. And I got this too. It's a wood. She's a solid plank of wood. It's a piece of wood. They put like this and they stack them up on top of each other for the scaffolding. So there's a few of these pieces of wood. I do that paint on it. Right? It's supposed to be like the Ford truck style RD, you know, like metal. It's got rust and stuff. You probably can't really see it here. But and I got a big mold on it. Then what I do is I hit it with a clear um, polyurethane coat. But I give it a bunch of coats so it gets real thick. Right? And it becomes like something I can eat my dinner, you know, on my plate and stuff. And I wash it off and shit. But I got a bigger one, too, I did here. Hold on. And this one is going to BL1, Breaking Night. Breaking Night, BL1. I also got this. I'm finishing up. I'm finishing this for the guy that's doing the documentary for me. Let me 
See this one, look. See, I like shit like this because this shit here, look at this shit. Uh. Wait, how do I get it straight like that? And then go back. Hey. Yeah, and this thing too, I, I shellac the fuck out of it. Yeah. Hey, that was a real woods. Hey. Ah. Like my dick. But no, for real. I did this for BL, man. I like his channel, man. Yo, give him a look, a like, give him a subscribe, man. He does good shit, man. Because he talks about shit that I don't know about. Yeah, he's got good shit going on. You know, those writers. They were kind of like we didn't get along. So it's interesting to hear their side of things. Yeah. All right, where are we, people? I'm going to wrap it up, man. I've been on here for a while, man. Kind of went down memory lane and my whole shit. Went, Yo, out those pizza. What do you think about retirement, man? Like, I could retire, man. I almost feel like they're like trying to get rid of me, like white man bad. You know, like, dude, <clears throat> you know? <laughs> I'm like, you know, like, oh, yeah. Like, I could leave. I could go anywhere. I could travel, you know? I mean, I did tap into the money I squirreled away. You know, times are hard with this whole pandemic and shit. But, I mean, I'm floating. I don't give a fuck. Even when I'm sinking, I'm floating, you know? But what do you think, man? Yeah, like, if I stick it out to 62 years old, right? And I'm 55 now. The only difference is, like, I get an extra hundred fucking dollars. That's, like, seven years of my life. And I just know this guy, Dr. John Kornblum. I worked with that guy side by side for, like, ten years, man, in STD, man. Yeah, we would check him for chlamydia and all that shit, man, back in the days. And he retired, like, eight years ago. He's dead. He's, like, dead. I'm like, wow, eight years ago. He was talking to me all the time. He's got horses. He used to show me pictures. He's got a Harley Davidson. He lives up above Westchester there. I forget the name of the place, Olympia or some shit like that. And, yeah, he had horses and all he's talking about. Oh, man, you know, I can't wait. And me, too. I talk all my life about, oh, I can't wait till I retire, man. Fuck this place. I'll be muttling. Like, muttly, you know, Dick Dastardly. You know? <laughs> like, Yo. And I'm like, now it's like, yo, dude, like, it's time to go. And I'm like, oh, fuck that, man. I ain't going nowhere. I think I'm actually scared, you know. But what do you think, man? Well, you said you got a few more years regardless, right? See, that's what I keep saying to myself. Let me just squirrel away a little more money, a couple more years, a couple more years. You know, and then what? Like, that's a, keep waiting before you know it. Like, I'm already, like, look at my fucking elbows, man. They're all wrinkly and shit. Look at that shit, man. Like, yo, my, my cartilage is gone, man. Look at that shit. I mean, I'm still, you know, hey, I'm still a sexy motherfucker. I still get that, you know? Hey, but when all is said and done, man, I honestly think, like, I feel if I, I, maybe I'm scared, like, if I have, I, you know, like, without structure in my life, I'm fucked. Because, you know, like I said, I, on paper, I'm like a fucking retard, man. But, yeah, if you really, like, look at it, it, like, I need structure, like how people need religion. It's like, oh, I can't do that. That's against God's way or something like that. And, you know, so yeah, people need, like, rules in their life. And, I like, this keeps me grounded. It keeps my powder dry, I guess. I have to wake up. I have to, you know. I, I, it's a source of responsibility. Like, you take that shit away from me, a couple of weeks, I'll be running around writing graffiti and shit like that. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm worried about the inner demon. You know what I mean? I, uh, um, yeah, I'm all fucked up, man. I really didn't think I'd make it this long, man. <laughs> it's what it is, yo. Yo, let me get out of here, people. I love yous, man. I had a good talk, man, but sh don't go telling people my business, all right? Keep it under your hat there.